Hey everyone, welcome back to the Painted Springs Garage. So today I've got a little bit of a project that I'm working on because being that I'm a scavenger of old things, equipment and car parts and so on, um, I have a few pieces of equipment that basically are at the end of their useful life but still have some useful parts on them. So I wanted to kind of combine some things to make something that is useful again. Uh, so I have here a snowblower from uh, like the early 90s. I don't know exactly when, 91, maybe 94, I don't know. Uh, but this is a Toro 521, which means it has a 5 horsepower engine and a 21 inch wide auger on it. And being that it's so old, um, it's kind of just, you know, beat. And uh, it's, it's real uh, laborious to push through the snow and move this thing around. Um, you know, it's still clear snow, okay, but uh, it's a fight to do it. Uh, so I've decided that it's a time to get a new snowblower. Haven't done that yet, but I've got this one that still has some good parts on it. Uh, mostly the engine I'm interested in, the 5 horsepower uh, horizontal shaft engine. Uh, then behind me, I also have an air compressor that's about as old, and uh, the electric motor on that has uh, given up. Uh, if I plug it into the wall and turn it on, it just pops the breaker. It doesn't even try to move. It's just internally shorted. And the new electric motor is a few hundred dollars, which honestly, it's probably worth uh, just replacing that and using this as an air compressor. Uh, but for my off-road adventures, it'd be really nice to have a gas-powered air compressor. So I'm thinking that I take this uh, compressor head that's just driven off a of V-belt and combine it with this uh, 5 horsepower engine that drives a V-belt from the snowblower. Uh, and I'll have to get an air tank that's uh, portable and probably some you know, uh, fittings, adapters and so on to make it all made up. Uh, build some kind of a platform for it. But uh, the idea is to make a semi-compact and portable uh, gas-powered air compressor for my spare parts. So let's get these two things apart and uh, kind of see what it all looks like and think about making a frame for it to uh, combine them together. Well, I've got the snowblower uh, engine taken off here and the air compressor compressor head. And, uh, you know, these are both pretty lightweight components on their own. I mean, considering that they're basically, you know, cast iron uh, pieces, they're, uh, they're not very heavy considering that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I got the engine, it's a, a five horse uh, horizontal shaft. So the, the shaft comes out the other side instead of coming out the bottom, like, like a push mower comes out the bottom. It's harder to do stuff with that since the uh, air compressor also has a horizontal shaft. Uh, the two pulleys line up on these engines. Um, and I really like this engine because it's all self-contained here. Uh, we've got uh, the gas tank here and a fuel shutoff valve. We've got the uh, choke and throttle controls and a primer bulb and pull start. Um, and then just a little uh, switch uh, to turn it on and off to turn, you know, to shut the ignition off when you, when you want to shut the engine off. Um, so this engine, I could just start it right here sitting on the ground. It doesn't need anything else. Um, and this air compressor head, all that it needs is uh, something with a V-belt to spin its pulley. Uh, so it has the air output uh, here on the side. Uh, so I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, find some fittings where I can make that come out at uh, like a like a 90 degree here. Um, then do some uh, heat shielding on this fuel tank. Uh, but really, the next thing I think is to uh, make some some kind of a mount uh, where I can basically bolt these to a platform together. Uh, so I can put the V-belt on it, some kind of a tensioner for the belt. Um, and then kind of figure out what to do with these fittings so I can actually connect this compressor head to a, some kind of a portable air tank. Um, but, you know, super simple stuff here. So I just got to do some fabricating to mount it together and uh, adapt some things together. And uh, I'll have a little gas air compressor. All right, everyone, so I'm making some real good progress here on the uh, gas-powered air compressor. After some brainstorming, I thought, you know what? What if I just took the structure off of the top of the air compressor, which the air compressor head, of course, mounts to, and tried to modify that to also fit the gas engine where the electric motor would usually be? Uh, so I cut that off the top of the old compressor tank and did a little bit of modification to it, uh, but that's it right here, and I repainted the whole thing. But what I've done is uh, this is the, uh, the top, the structure from the compressor, 
Uh, then on the bottom of it, I added some uh, angle iron uh, pieces to kind of give it a uh, better footing and uh, also to make sure it stood level. Uh, then uh, underneath that, I added some more angle iron to just give the whole thing more rigidity. Uh, so this here now is a real solid structure. Uh, so at this point, I've got some uh, little rubber feet. Uh, these little guys, I'm going to put uh, one of these on each of the four corners uh, to help with the vibration and also just help the whole thing sit better and, and uh, you know, ride better in the back of the truck without scratching everything up. And uh, so I'm going to attach these to the bottom of it, but otherwise, um, just going to start bolting stuff on here. Now, one more benefit of using the uh, structure from the compressor is that I can take the, uh, the shroud, the belt shroud uh, from the original compressor and bolt it basically right back on here. Um, you know, that's going to take a little bit of modification to make it sit right with the gas motor. Um, and I might have covered up some of the mounting holes with the angle iron, uh, but I'll be able to reattach the shroud and uh, cover that belt up to, you know, for a little bit extra safety on there as well. Uh, so let's get everything bolted on here and see how it looks. All right, everybody. So I'm outside now with uh, my new uh, gas powered air compressor, uh, my new compressor made of old parts. And uh, everything here is really coming together uh, really nicely. Uh, so, I mean, it almost looks like it's meant to be uh, the way the, the compressor head uh, mounted up alongside the uh, gas engine. Uh, the factory fan shroud from the compressor uh, fit on there nicely. So it's almost like it's meant to be here. Um, I've got the uh, air tank. Uh, this is just a Harbor Freight 11 gallon air tank. And I uh, I'll replace some of the fittings on here. Uh, so the way this will work is when I fire up the gas air compressor, um, it has a, a male um, nipple on here. Um, so if I don't have anything hooked up to it, then it's just going to be blowing air out of that and the compressor can spin freely. It's not going to be deadheaded and, and just build up an astronomical amount of pressure right away. Um, now, in order to get the air into the tank, I've got an air hose here. So I'll hook it up really kind of backwards where I'll put the, the female side onto the compressor. Usually you'd have a, uh, you know, this end on the compressor and have, uh, you know, the male end on your hose. Uh, but I'll put the female end on the compressor and then that's going to let me have uh, this uh, male end here that I can bring over to the air tank. Got kind of a tangle of lines, uh, but I can bring over to the air tank and put that into uh, the tank here. And uh, by doing this, I've got, um, you know, if, if this is disconnected again, the air just blows out of there, so it's not deadheaded. Uh, so from a not overpressurizing my compressor, you know, that's safe. Um, but then also I could disconnect it from the compressor and I'd have an air hose hooked up here. Uh, or I could leave this hooked up here and plug in a second air hose here that I could use to pump up tires or use air tools or whatever I want to do. So I'm going to get this air hose connected and uh, fire up the compressor and we'll see how fast we can make some air pressure here. All right, so this is kind of the moment of truth here where we see if this uh, home-built gas air compressor can actually fill this tank with air, uh, shooting for 125 PSI. Uh, and I also want to see when it does get there, uh, would this little pressure relief valve be enough to blow off the excess pressure, or does it keep on climbing and I need to throttle the engine down or shut it off or do something else? Uh, so I've got the air hose hooked up from the output of the compressor. Uh, to the inlet of the tank, and uh, let's see what this will do. So I'm gonna flip on the uh, ignition switch. So I got a little toggle switch here to turn it on and flip it off when I need to shut the engine off. So we'll turn that on, turn the choke on, give it a little bit of throttle, a couple pushes of the primer, and let's see if it'll start. All right, so it likes to move a little bit. Move that back there. All right, let's give it a little more choke, a little more primer. All right, so I figured out what my problem was. I, uh, I put an ignition switch on the uh, 
on the, the snowblower engine. So it wasn't starting because I'm killing the spark with the switch that I put on, <laughs> which I want to do to shut it off, but I had the switch basically upside down. So let's try to start it again with the switch in the correct position so I can actually have some spark. <laughs> So give it just a little bit of choke, Let's see if it'll start. As you can see, that makes a lot of air pressure, even when I got the engine idling at a relatively low idle setting. Um, and this, uh, this tank here is working great because it has the built-in pressure relief valve, so it looks like that opens at about 140 PSI and just blows air out, just vents air out, and it closes at about 80 PSI. Uh, so if I just had the compressor running, uh, you know, maybe I'm slowly filling up some tires on some, you know, a group of vehicles after we go off-roading and th the compressor's just idling. Um, if the tank pressure gets too high, it's going to blow that valve open, relieve the pressure, and keep on, uh, you know, just making more air for us. Uh, so overall, I think it's a big success. It's a little bit heavy. It's definitely a two-person job to pick that up and move it. The air tank is obviously pretty light. Um, but the fact that we can have air coming in and then another line hooked up, uh, you know, we could put a 50 foot or 100 foot air line on that to fill up a bunch of people's tires. Um, I think that this is a really good portable solution for a group of people off-roading. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video uh, interesting, maybe informational. Maybe you've got some old junk of your own laying around that uh, you could build something similar, maybe something totally different. Uh, but, you know, this just goes to, so, to show that instead of throwing away old equipment, if I can repurpose some of it, if you can repurpose some of it, uh, you could make some really cool things and not have that much money invested. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.